Welcome back. Before I start this particular section, the numerical methods that I've covered in this chapter are iteration and newton raphson formula. Iteration and newton raphson formula is used to approximate the root of f of x. In this video, I'll be looking at 10.4 numerical methods application to modelling. 10.4 represents chapter 10, section 4 of the Pearson A-level maths, pure maths year 2 textbook. Here's an exam style question. The diagram shows a sketch of part of the curve with the equation b equal 10 minus a half t plus 1 in square brackets multiplied by ln t plus 1. v is a function of t. I've labelled it as v equal f of t. The function models the velocity in metres per second of a skier travelling in a straight line. Part a, find the coordinates of a and b. Before we look at part a, the ski is travelling in a straight line, but the velocity is changing. So as time is changing, the velocity is changing, therefore we have a curve, not a straight line. Let's go back to part A. Find the coordinates of A and B. A and B are t-intercepts, therefore we know that at A and at B, V is equal to 0. This implies that 10 minus a half t plus 1 in square brackets, ln t plus 1 is equal to 0. We can now generate two equations. The first equation is 10 minus a half t plus 1 equal to 0. The second equation is ln t plus 1 equal to 0. After solving the two equations, we end up with t equal 19 and t equal 0. So at the point A, the coordinate is 0, 0, and at the point B, the coordinate is 19, 0. Let's have a look at part B. Find f dash of t. So we have to differentiate f of t. f of t represents v. And we know v is equal to 10 minus a half t plus 1 in square brackets multiplied by ln t plus 1. We have a product of two functions. So to differentiate f of t, we need to use the product rule f dash of t is equal to 10 minus a half t plus 1 in square brackets multiplied by the derivative of ln t plus 1, which is 1 over t plus 1, plus ln t plus 1 multiplied by the derivative of 10 minus a half t plus 1. Well, the derivative of that will be minus a half. I can now simplify f dash of t to give me the following result. 10 minus a half t plus 1 over t plus 1 minus a half ln t plus 1. Moving on to part c. Given that P is a stationary point on the curve, show that the t-coordinate of P lies between 5.8 and 5.9. Ladies and gents, let's go back to the graph. First of all, the point P is a stationary point because the gradient of the tangent to the curve at the point P is 0. Now, I'm going to label 5.8 and 5.9 on the graph. We know that the t-coordinate of p lies between 5.8 and 5.9. How do we show that this is valid? Well, I'm going to draw a tangent to the curve at the point t equal 5.8. Next, I'm going to draw a tangent to the curve at the point t equal 5.9. I can see that there is a positive gradient over here and a negative gradient over here and therefore there must be a stationary point between t equal 5.8 and t equal 5.9. So what do I do? What do I write down? Well, I substitute t equal 5.8 into f dash of t. I write down what I get. Then I substitute t equal 5.9 into f dash of t. Write down what I get. There will be a change of sign after which I can conclude that the t-coordinate of p lies between 5.8 and 5.9. After using my calculator, I get f dash of 5.8 to be greater than 0 and f dash of 5.9 to be less than 0. 
Therefore, I can now write my conclusion, change of sign, so the t-coordinate of p lies between 5.8 and 5.9. Moving on to part d. An approximation for the t-coordinate of p is found using the iterative formula tn plus 1 equal 20 over 1 plus ln t plus 1 minus 1. t naught is equal to 5, find t1 and t2 to three decimal places. Well, to work out t1, we have to substitute n equals 0 into the iterative formula. To work out t2, we have to substitute n equals 1 into the iterative formula. After using my calculator, I get t1 equals 6.164 to 3 decimal places and t2 equals 5.736 to 3 decimal places. Please guys, be careful when you're calculating t2, don't forget to use the answer button to avoid a rounding error. So you should end up with this result over here for your t2. Moving on to part E. Starting with t0 equal 5, use the newton raston formula to find t1 to 3 decimal places. Okay, t1 is equal t0 minus f of t0 divided by f dash of t0. So we have t0 equal 5, we can replace the t naughts with 5 to give us 5 minus f of 5 divided by f dash of 5. So what I need to do now is use my calculator to find t1. After using my calculator, I get t1 equal minus 41.318. That particular approximation for the t-coordinate of p is not in the interval 5.8 to 5.9. So we can conclude that starting with t0 equal 5 and using the newton raphson formula does not give us a good second approximation for the t-coordinate of p. In this case, minus 41.318.